One of the stories that I, I mentioned there is, is one of Groundhog Day has been such a strange experience for me. Just as an actor, you have lots of strange experiences, but in Groundhog Day, everything was strange. <laughs> this, I want to tell you the story of how I got the part, which is very strange. So I was working on a movie. I, I was on location in Paris, uh, California. Sometimes I just like to try to pretend I'm John Travolta. You know, Paris, California is the hot, they advertise as the hot air balloon capital of California. As if, you know, every state has a hot air balloon capital. It's about two hours from Los Angeles. And I, I in this movie Calendar Girl, I play a gangster type guy with a brother who is deaf and mute, uh, who was played by Kurt Fuller, a wonderful actor who was on The Good Wife and all, all sorts of other shows, too. And to learn the part, they taught me sign language of the deaf, and they, ter they, they taught Kurt sign language of the deaf, too. So he would ask me what people were saying, and then I would translate the script to them, and curious, you know, Right after I did Groundhog Day and did these classes is when Seinfeld asked me to audition for Tor Ekman. So I said, well, I can do, what if I did signs for everything Tor said? So one thing led to another. So Kurt and I were, were playing brothers, and I got the audition for Groundhog Day. So I drove the two hours back to Los Angeles, met Harold Ramis, did my Ned, and like I mentioned before, I was my performance was big enough to play in the Roman Coliseum. I, th I think I was like unzipping Harold's pants and shining his shoes. It was terrible. It was terrible. And, and, and I drove back to Paris because we were still shooting. And for the only time in my life, they put me in a room on location with another actor, with Kurt. So Kurt and I were sharing the same room. Right, we had the two queen beds, and at night it was like we were at summer camp. And they, they turn out the light, you know, we turn out the lights, and Kurt's in the dark. He said, "So, uh, you know, you got anything coming up?" And I know the one thing actors hate is to hear that somebody else had an audition. The only thing that can make an actor happy is if you answer that question and say, "Kurt, you know, actually, I'm leaving the business. I'm going to open a sandwich shop. I'm done." So I just, I didn't say anything. I just said, uh, nothing, Kurt, you know, the same old, same old. I said, how about you? He said, well, actually, I do have something big coming up. Um, Harold Ramis is a friend of mine. <laughs> and uh, they wrote a part for me in the new Bill Murray movie, uh, Groundhog Day. And I'm playing this crazy insurance salesman, <laughs> Ned Ryerson. Now at this point, <laughs> I'm lying in bed. My brain is exploding. I realize that I am part of a tragic tale. <laughs> and I don't know who the victim is going to be, but it's going to be one of the two of us. <laughs> I didn't say anything, and I get a phone call from my agent. I got a call back, which meant I was going back again. So I didn't say anything to Kurt because I said, hey, you know, they wrote the part for Kurt. He said he's been rehearsing it for the last month, doing readings with Bill and everything. So I drive the two hours back to California, uh, to Los Angeles, audition with Harold, drive the two hours back, and in the car ride back, my cell phone, which in those days was about this big, <laughs> you know, and I answered it. And it was my agent saying, you have the part of Ned Ryerson. Yes. I get back to Paris, and Kurt got that phone call, too, from his agent. So he is furious. He is so hurt. He's been so betrayed. And, and he doesn't know in which direction to vent. Uh, he didn't know if it was me or, her, or someone betrayed him. So angry, eyes filling with tears. Fortunately, he was playing a mute. Uh, 
he couldn't say anything. Uh, didn't say anything in our pillow talk at night either. So as soon as that, that movie ended, I left and came up to Chicago and started shooting Groundhog Day. The movie finished shooting, and we were going to do our premiere in Los Angeles. And I'm walking up to the theater. Um, Andy asked me if I would take her to the premiere because she didn't want guys hitting on her. <laughs> like, I, hey, baby. Can you handle this? <laughs> so we're walking up to the theater, and there is Kurt Fuller standing at the front of the theater. And he said, I'm going to watch the movie with you. <laughs> so Kurt comes in, and we watch Groundhog Day. And we walk out of the theater in silence. And Kurt said, well, you took my part from me but at least you did a good job. <laughs> Congratulations. Wow. And he shook my hands and Exactly. I, I'm with the ah. Uh, <laughs> the uh, graciousness. The, again, courage. The class of Kurt Fuller uh, has always been one of the stars I keep in the sky. And I say, I'm going to aim my ship in that direction. Uh, such a magnificent man, such a magnificent actor. So, Kurt, thank you for letting me play your part. <laughs> Terrible.